What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now, I know what you're all saying, that's not your workshop, but this was my original workshop. This is where I started my YouTube channel right here. That was my backdrop right there in this garden shed is where it all took off. Now, what I'm doing in here now is converting this into a little playhouse for my daughter. So I'm gonna cut this shed or split this shed in half. I'm gonna put a stud of partition in the middle of it. And this section is gonna become a little playroom for my daughter to give her stuff to put our toys and uh, just a little space for her really. And I wanted to share the build with you guys. Now it's not gonna be a super in-depth build. I'm just gonna share the project. And hopefully you guys will get some ideas for it. I gotta get this done as quickly as possible and I really don't have time to go through every aspect of the build. So a little bit of carpentry work to do, a little bit of electrical work to do. I'm gonna put some insulation in here, some OSB sheets on the wall to keep it nice and cost effective. Paint it, get a nice uh, mats on the floor. I'm gonna put a door where the window is and I'm gonna put a slide uh, down from the window so she can climb up and slide out the window into the garden. At least that's the plan anyway. So uh, without further ado, I've gotta get on now and build this. So our first thing we gotta do is build a stud right in the middle of this workshop. Okay, so here's where the studded partition is gonna go. This is the center of this shed. So I'm gonna build a stud up here and essentially cut the shed in half. Now there isn't room to swing a cat in here. I can barely fit this in on the camera, so hopefully you guys will see. So I'm gonna get on and build this stud. So you're gonna watch an electrician pretend to be a carpenter in here and put up a bit of stud work. And there's nothing square, nothing's level, nothing square. This is the crooked house, um, essentially. So we're gonna to have to try and match this in as best we can. So let's get on and get on. Okay guys, so I'm busy with the stud work. It's going up there nicely. If you squint your eyes and shake your head really fast, it almost looks like an actual carpenter did it. But uh, the angles are all over the place because I said the whole shed is kind of tilted and nothing is square and true. So when I'm doing jobs like this, I like to just to get angles like this. I like to just cut things over size. Now I know those carpenters probably screaming at the screen saying that's not how you do it. But this is how I do it. Just slightly oversize the piece, get my level, get that nice and level and then just mark my angle. So I'm only losing a small bit. Now I know there's a much faster way to do this. Uh, and carpenters will be able to measure this exactly. But uh, this is just nice, quick and easy. And if you do it like this, you can't go wrong and all your angles match up perfectly. So let's cut it and put it in. Perfect, I'd be pretty happy with that. It looks like it grew there. So yeah, just a nice little idea. Just that's how I do it. Now again, this piece, Running up here is not a continuous angle, there's actually a belly in the ceiling. So it, it's kind of bowing in the middle, which is why um, there are all these pieces aren't the same angle the whole way down. So it's nice just to measure them and do them like that so they end up perfect. Okay guys, there we go, the stud work is up. So that's the first part of this project complete. Now, if a man on a galloping horse passed by, he'd never know an electrician did that, or not a carpenter. It's not too bad if I do say so myself. Although, uh, yeah, a little bit unorthodox in places, but it's pretty good and it's good and solid. And it's gonna add a little bit of structural integrity to this shed. So that's the first part down. Now I have to do the electrics before I put the insulation in. So I know a guy who can do that. Okay guys, the electrics are in place. I'm keeping this super basic as well. Again, it's only a little playroom. So a couple of sockets and a couple of lights and I'm using the existing supply that was already out here. That was here when I moved into the house. I put the shed in, but there was a supply here. So I'm gonna reuse that. So it's not long enough, unfortunately, to reach a little subboard here. So I'm gonna come into a socket and then feed on up. It's backed by a 10 amp RCBO or a 10 amp GFO, you'd call it in the States. So we have a little subboard here, light switch here, socket here. I have an outdoor socket there for the pond and we have another socket on this side and then just two lights, one here and one here. So nice and simple. And uh, I'll cut the boxes in afterwards. So like I said, I'm gonna put OSB slabs on the wall and I'll cut in some dry lining boxes afterwards. You'll see me do that anyway. I'll show you everything as I'm going, but I'm gonna keep it nice and quick and super basic. So that's the electrics in. Now I have to look at the insulation. Okay guys, we're on to day two of this build and I'm getting the fiberglass insulation into the wall. So it's just 100 mil or four inch uh, fiberglass. When they say four inch, it's really only two inches, but it fits into the wall nicely. Uh, there's a breathable membrane on that wall, so I'm not too concerned about putting the fiberglass up against it. And it is a garden shed after all. However, if this was a house, you would really need to do a little bit of investigation, a bit of research about where you put your insulation and how you put it up against um, 
your felt. Some of that felt can sweat, it can condensate, and you can get real issues. But I'm not expecting to have too many issues in a garden shed. But certainly, like I said, if it was a house, that's something you would have to do some research on. Now, today's job, I have to get some OSB sheets on the wall. So we have half inch or 12 mil OSB sheets. So it's nice and light, it's good and cheap, and it'll be robust enough for kids to play in here. And uh, we'll paint the walls and they can draw all over the walls if they want. But this shed is not laid out to take eight by four sheets. So, uh, we got to get some timber in this wall now to accept the sheets. The stud wall I built, um, I'll have all the uprights set for an 8x4 sheet, so that's fine. So let's start there, get the sheet on the wall, and then we'll see what else we have to do. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be using. This is 12 mil, or like I said, half inch OSB sheet. Now OSB is relatively inexpensive compared to plywoods and MDF and other such things. It's good and robust. Um, but like I say, it's nice and cheap. It has one good side, one rough side, so it's ideal for doing this. It's exactly what I sheeted out my entire workshop walls with, was this stuff. So uh, I did here in here for relatively uh, low money. Again, it's cheaper than plywood, cheaper than MDF, and it's good and robust. So today is all about the track saw and getting these sheets all ripped down. I'm not gonna be super particular about this. Again, it's just gonna be a little garden shed, a playroom. So let's get cutting. Okay, so there's our first sheet in place. You can see I left these spacings for the sheet. So just a hole down here, pop our socket cable through, screw this up, and this will all add to the rigidity of the wall as well. So this is just gonna be quickly screwed up now. You can see a track saw is ideal for this kind of work. It really makes it quick and easy. So uh, let's get on it. Okay, so we're progressing around nicely. I'm just getting all the full width sheets up first. So everywhere I can get a full width sheet, I'm doing so. So I can try to mim minimize the off cuts because there's going to be a small bit of waste, but there's nothing we can do about that. And I'm just putting in cross pieces in the walls just to support it because obviously this shed wasn't laid out to take eight by four sheets. So we need fixings for our sheets in the corners and behind them. So uh, yeah, simple enough. Flying through it with the track saw. That's the case, I just pop it in there and screw it home. Now, joining the ceiling along here is going to be an issue, but when I get to that, I'll show you guys. Okay guys, so the walls are all cladded with the OSB. It's been a long, long day. I want to get on and try and get the ceiling done before this day is out. So we've got to get insulation and boards on the ceiling. Now, the issue I'm going to have is I've got nothing to fix to here. So I have from the apex down, I have three fixings, but the wall is going to be an issue. So what I've done, I've taken a two by four, I've put roughly a 20 degree bevel in it, and I'm going to fix that to the wall there. Now a two by one lat would do this as well, but I don't have them. And uh, I have a two by four, I have a couple of these, so I'm going to use them. So that should give me a nice fixing all the way into the wall and all the way up my ceiling, just like that. So now I've got to go in and rip these with the track saw. Okay, so I'm set up to do the rip here. I have my saw set to just under 20 degrees. Seems to be about right. It doesn't have to be bang on. We're just gonna get some screws in this anyway, so it'll be fine. So I'm gonna rip a 10 foot or three meter length. And I have to say for all the giving out I do about the Bosch track saw, today it has performed flawlessly. So for ripping down sheet goods and that, it's absolutely fantastic. Just suffers when you're using with MFT table. I'm also hanging up my hose with a bit of rope, just trying that out. That really seems to help with the uh, uh, dust extraction man management so it makes it a lot easier having some of the hose just hanging from up there so yeah finding all this stuff out today as well Anyways, there we got us both of those up and ripped and that should allow me just to run my um, 
OSB slab from the ceiling straight into the wall. Now I'm not going to angle the OSB slab as well. I think I'm just going to um, run that straight in and maybe put a bead around the corner just for speed's sake, but uh, at least I have a fix in there now. Okay, so all the insulation is now in the ceiling, so it's four inch fiberglass in the ceiling again. Now, like I said, when I was putting insulation in the wall, don't take this as a way you should do your house. I'm just doing this in my shed, I'm taking a chance. Fiberglass can sweat, uh, especially when it's tight to the ceiling. So if you have a flat roof or something, you put fiberglass in it and you don't allow for air, it can condensate and it can sweat. But uh, I'm in a shed, there's gonna be no moisture in here other than the natural atmospheric moisture, I suppose. So there'll be no showers or no bats or nobody cooking or cleaning in here. Unless like a trying out of the house that is, and then maybe there will be. But I'm hoping it should be okay. And if it's not okay, I will be sure to let you guys know. Okay guys, so the ceiling is just finished. Um, just a case of screw up some OSB sheets again, measure and, and screw it up. Not much to it. It's a bit of a patchwork down this end because I'm trying to use up every bit of scrap that I have left. There's 12 sheets in total, but I'll give you the material list now in a minute. But uh, yeah, the last piece to go in. And uh, just like everything else, nothing is square, nothing is true. But... There you go. When you paint it, you won't even see it. Okay guys, we're in handheld mode, so just hang on to your stomachs for a second. Let's take you through what we've done. So partitioned wall there, um, socket here. Move around, I have put some reinforcement in the wall here. This is where there's gonna be a little ladder. We're gonna make this a door in a future video. So some way of opening this up and there's gonna be a slide outside, so we're gonna build all that as well. Uh, so we have a socket here, light switch here, small little sub board is gonna go here, light there, and we have a light on this side. And then it's just a case of a bit of insulation and some OSB slabs in the wall. I have a bit of filling to do here because you can see how off square everything is now. So uh, I'll sort that out. And then it's a case of paint this. Okay guys, I think we will leave it there for part one of this build. Now, just give you some rough dimensions. It's roughly three meters by three meters, this space, and 2.8 meters to the apex. So in total in this build so far, I've used 12 three meter lengths or 12 10 foot lengths of four by two. I've used 12 sheets, 12 millimeter or half inch OSB, and I've used three and a half rolls of four uh, inch or 100 mil insulation, fiberglass insulation in the walls. So that's exactly what I've used so far. Um, it's cost me about 400 euros for all the materials that I've put into this so far. So the OSB sheets are roughly 17 euros a piece and there was 12 of them. Um, so that's kind of how much money is this is after costing me so far, so just let you guys know. Now, a nice thing about this as well is a lot of you guys are emailing me asking me how big a space do you need for hand tool woodworking? Well, this would be ideal, a three meter by three meter, or maybe just a small bit bigger, sheet it out like this, insulate it, and you would have yourself a lovely little workshop for hand tool woodworking. This is exactly the size of workshop I started out in. My other shed is this, behind this shed is that size, same size as this, and then I had a slightly bigger one, which you saw at the start of the video before I chopped it in half. So this would be actually ideal for hand tool woodworking now. Be a nice little space, I would love to have this when I was starting out, but now I have my big workshop, which is even better. So hope you've enjoyed what guys. Um, there's gonna be more parts to this. I'm gonna keep it uh, as brief as possible because I have to get through this build as quickly as I can. But I'll share the electrical installation with you guys. I'll share the door we're gonna build here, the climbing frame. We have to build a slide. We have to paint the place. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the floor. We have to sort out the door as well. So put some insulation to that door. So we've all had to figure out as well. So that's all gonna be coming up. So until then, I shall see you in the next one. I'm quite tired now. I'm gonna get a beer and then a shower or a shower and a beer at the same time. I'm not sure. I'll see you in the next one.